So if you are not, if you are an English speaking streamer, you may be thinking, well, that's the future, right? English speaking streams are the future, here we go. Well, another thing I wanna share with you guys is that global viewership, this is according to Stream Hatchet, and according to global viewership numbers, six out of the top 10 peak streams weren't even English channels. So if you guys are speaking English, which all of you guys are right now, international markets are the ones that are really growing. International markets are the ones that are breaking records. Six out of the top 10 peak streams weren't even speaking English this last week here in, in the, during the holidays. So if you're an English speaking stream and you think that's the big market and that's the big opportunity, I got news for you, it's not. I'm not telling you that to beat you up. I'm not telling you that to make you feel terrible about yourself and to make you feel like streaming is not gonna go anywhere for you. I just wanna put the reality on you. There are so many YouTubers out there building you up, telling you you can go full time and it's gonna be easy. There's so many advice guys selling you online courses and all this crap out there telling you, you know, it's you're gonna you're gonna grow and you're gonna get there if you just work hard enough. What I want you guys to think about is you are getting there if you acquire skills that you can use outside of streaming if streaming doesn't work out as a full-time option for you. Because for the vast majority of you guys, it's not going to. Let me show you another statistic that is going to absolutely blow you away. This right here, if this is the only thing you watch today, check it out. This is the number of viewers per streamer on Twitch. I'm going to disappear. Look at it right behind me. The number of viewers per streamer on Twitch since 2013. Now, can you guys see a pattern here? Do you guys see a pattern? <laughs> I mean, seriously, in 2013, the number of viewers per stream was 49. In 2014, the number of viewers per stream was 42. In 2015, 34, 32, 29, 25, 23, 25, and it's going down to about 23. So as you can see, the number of viewers per streamer, even according to this site, is at an all time low. And it's not gonna ever go up. That's my prediction. That's my prediction. That's not what the site said, that's my prediction. So what does that mean? The streaming skills that you have, the broadcasting skills that you have, knowing how to use OBS, knowing how to use the internet like a freaking expert, how to build a computer, how to troubleshoot tech issues. These are the skills of the future you're acquiring now. I've heard people do podcasts and do rants, telling people, even Mark Cuban, billionaire Mark Cuban has said this, if you're trying to stream video games on the internet, you're completely wasting your time. Go do something worth your while, kid. Guess what? I've hired dozens of streamers, dozens of YouTubers, dozens of online influencers. I've talked about them on countless episodes before that I've hired because of their skills that they have, their internet skills, because I can't go find some normal professional who's been working a regular office job to do the skills of the future that social media 2.0 and social media 3.0 require. The year 2021 and beyond, we just crossed the bridge where people realize and businesses realize they've got to have a major online component to their business or they're going to go out of business. And all of you guys, online streamers, live streamers and gamers, you're the ones with the skills to fulfill the needs of these companies. And if you don't soon realize that you that's your skill and that's a career opportunity here for you guys to go full time, supplement your income, helping these companies, somebody else is going to step in and take that job away from you. I want you to know that. But wait, there's more. I, I always bring lots of numbers and lots of facts. It's not just my opinions here on the show. It's always facts, facts, facts. So here's another one for you I've never shown to you on the show. So behind me is a chart. It's hard to read, I know, because there's lots of numbers. This is from Sully Gnome, and this is the viewer distribution of the top channels on Twitch versus everyone else, okay? And so I'm just gonna choose, um, as you can see, the viewership numbers went up once COVID-19 dropped right here, as you can see, and they've kind of more or less evened out over time. But I wanted to show you in the last month how disproportionate the viewership is at the top of Twitch versus everyone else to further illustrate what the actual prospects are of you just getting viewers in general and any streamer getting viewers in general. Let me disappear. So right here, let me just grab a random day here. This is the most recent day, January 4th. Here we go. These numbers are really tiny. Let me see if I can zoom in. I can't zoom in anymore. I'll just read you the number. Are you ready? The top five channels on Twitch right here on this day got 421,000 viewers. 
the bottom 2,000, no, I'm sorry, channels 2,500 through 5,000. So these aren't even the bottom channels. These are still the top 1% of Twitch. The 2,500 through 5,000 channels only got 198,000. So let me just recap that for you and make it real simple. The top five channels on Twitch, five, got more than double the viewership of 2,500 through 5,000 of thousands of channels that are in the top 1% of Twitch. So even if you're in the top 1% of Twitch, you still get half the viewership spread amongst thousands of streamers as the top five channels on Twitch. That's how top heavy this market is. You guys hear Bernie Sanders in American politics talking about the top 1%. Well, the top 1% of the top 1% of Twitch in streaming and of influencers are getting the vast majority of audiences, disproportionate amounts of the audiences, making it even more difficult for you guys to break through. So, does that make sense to you guys? So it's not only just being in the top 1% of Twitch, it's being in the top 1% of the top 1% of Twitch. That's where the viewership is. That's where it's weighted in your favor. So if you think you can break through 10 million streamers to get there, go for it. I will be here to help you with my Digital Drop podcast. I will be here to help you with my coaching services at awalldigital.com. If you guys are interested in booking me for one-on-one -on -one coaching services, you guys can do that. I just got off a call today with a fantastic channel that's got uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, subscribers. They're looking to break through in the anime niche. I've been working with them for years. If you guys want to book me for coaching, you can go to my website and you can do that. If you want to chase that dream, I'm here to support you. I just want you to know that when you do, you have to do something different now because everything is weighted so much against you when it comes to numbers. But how do you break through in 2021 and beyond? How do you actually break through given how massively competitive it is? It is. Note it as, as, the, as, this stream, as this chart indicates, the viewer to channel ratio is going down. Given how massively competitive it is, how do you break through in this market? And the answer is doing something very, very, very unique that's different than everyone else. And I've got a stream pulled up here called Code Miko in the background. She's live right now. This is an example of what the future of streaming looks like. Code Miko is this clown character right here. She's got, she's streaming to 9,000 people on Twitch right now. And she's interviewing this other streamer here in this virtual set. She's a VTuber. And the clown character that's popping up on stream is her. And she's a completely computer generated VTuber, virtual YouTuber. And she has created this entire live stream using uh, Unreal Engine. And she is in a motion capture suit generating all of the content you see live right here. So if you think that you being in your gameplay and playing your video games on Twitch and on YouTube and everything is, is what breaks through and is what's growing streams anymore, the stakes are high, 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 way higher than that now. There are people that are com doing completely computer generated versions of themselves and doing an entire nighttime talk show on, on Twitch doing a full-blown production that goes way beyond anything you're attempting. So if you want to break through in 2021 and beyond, then you need to be really upping the stakes in terms of your production quality and how creative you're being as a streamer like Code Miko, like Sushi Dragon, like Dr. Disrespect, and like the streamers of the future that realize that they need to be in the top 1% of the top 1% of the top 1% in order to actually make it as a streamer. So basing your, basing your happiness off of streaming comes down to this question, chat. It comes down to this question, live viewers. Are you willing to do what it takes to break through? Are you willing to do what it takes to come up with extremely creative ideas? Are you willing to take massive risks and drop hundreds of hours in your time to try new, new concepts, to make new characters, to do skits, to do crazy stuff that nobody else is willing to do? eating ghost peppers, live streaming while you're uh, jumping on a trampoline off your roof, doing crazy juggling stuff. I'm not saying you should jump off of your roof, by the way. Bad idea. Uh, dressing up in cosplay, doing crazy modding and video games and doing something totally unique, creating an insane character, streaming from the middle of Times Square, doing interviews with people, going to the next, 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 next level as a live streamer. Are you willing and ready to do that? 
If you're not, then you're probably not cut out for this, kid. Because guess what? Nobody gives a shit about some dude on the screen playing video games anymore. It's over, dude. As Andrew Perrin on the Digital Drop podcast, my podcast said, the novelty of people playing video games on the screen is over, man. Nobody gives a shit about that. They've seen that thousands of times and y'all know it. Nobody cares about that anymore. So what are you adding on top of that? And if you say, well, I'm building a community. Nobody cares about your community, man. Nobody cares about your community. You're just some dude on camera playing video games. What are you doing on top of that? I'm not doing, I'm not telling you this to just be hard on you or to disenfranchise you or to make you feel like you're not good enough. I'm telling you this because it's what you need to hear if you really want to break through. I'm telling you this because this is the push you need to hear if you want to get past the millions of streamers you need to get past to get to the front of the line to have a large enough audience to go full time in 2021 and beyond. This is what you need to hear. This is where the bar is right now, guys. This is the bar. Completely virtually generated characters with motion capture and full-blown productions on Twitch. This is the future of streaming. If you don't bring your bar up from dude on screen playing video games to dude on screen playing video games who's funny to dude on screen playing a character doing unique events and doing insane stuff on screen, this is the bar now, way up here. And if you wanna excel and become the top, you need to go way beyond that off the top of the screen in this example. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the reality. I'm sorry that nobody else is really telling you this right now, but I just showed you all of the numbers, 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 numbers that prove what I'm talking about as a trend is true. And you guys kind of knew it all along, didn't you? So that doesn't mean that it's hopeless. One, it doesn't mean that it's hopeless at all. One of the things you can do, just a very practical thing that you can do, is restream to multiple platforms like I'm doing right now. I'm on Twitch, Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, and I increase my viewership, and you guys can too, by streaming to more platforms than just one. That's one way, really practical thing you can do. I'm sponsored by Restream, as you guys know. It's a practical thing that you guys can do right now if you wanna grow as a streamer. So I'm gonna post in chat right now my Restream affiliate link and also the discount code if you guys wanna pick that up. Restream is a great way to grow your audience faster. But also, you need to be adding unique value like Code Miko is on their streams. You need to be thinking about what that unique value is. What is it going to be? What is your unique good value going to be? The title of your streams, the thumbnails of your streams, those are good. But what's your unique value beyond that? What is the insane, killer, amazing topic that is so compelling that people have to come back and have to click on it? It can't just be clickbait titles. It can't just be great thumbnails. It's gotta be something more, all right? And if you guys aren't willing to do all of that, or if you do and you never quite make it, it's okay. Really quick, we are giving away $1,100 in gaming creator gear for free. Link in the description below. It includes this microphone, this shock mount, this boom arm, and the mixer that goes with it. Compliments of Rode. If you want to sound this good, you could win this package for free. Let me just show it to you really quick. This is the package here. It includes the Rodecaster Pro Mixer and TubeBuddy, our friends, threw in a legend license of TubeBuddy if you're looking to step up your YouTube channel management game. And our friends over at Restream threw in a license for Restream if you want to stream to multiple platforms and grow through live streaming faster. All of this for free. Enter to win the sweepstakes in the link in the description below. Best of luck to you. I hope you win. Good luck, gaming creators.